Hello everyone, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome to video two of my Christmas card series for 2019. So for today's video, I started with some B watercolor paper, which comes in six by nine inch pieces. So I cut it in half, so I've got two pieces that are four and a half by six inches. And then I have the Simon Says Stamp Outline Christmas Bulbs background. I've already done a video using this. And then I was looking at it again and I was like, oh, there's just so many options. <laughs> so I wanted to use it again. So I pulled the uh, foam mat out of my Misty because this is a cling rubber background stamp. So I pulled that out and then I'm going to heat emboss this onto both pieces of that watercolor paper. So I lined it up. I used my anti-static powder tool, brushed off the excess, and then I'm stamping the stamp twice with Simon's Clear Embossing Ink just to make sure I really get it good and stamped because it's a large stamp, all the detail, etc. And then I'm coating both pieces with Detail White Embossing Powder and setting it aside, I'm going to do the second one and then I'm going to heat emboss them both at the same time just because. So set that one aside, repeated the steps, the exact same. I am stamping on, there's a little bit of a smoother side with this watercolor paper. One side's a little bit more textured, one side's a little bit smoother. It, I don't know if it'll make that big of a difference, but I took a look at it and I was like, well, you get a better stamped impression when it's smoother. So that's what I did. Coated this one with the detail white embossing powder, and then I'm gonna melt all of this with my heat tool, which I pretty much edited out of the video because you can't really see. Like even in real life, sometimes it's hard to see. That's why I'm always like tilting it back and forth in the light to make sure that it's, you know, glossy and smooth and there's no gritty areas because that means they're not melted. So I melt both completely with my heat tool. And then once those are all melted, cooled off for a few seconds, um, I'm just going to tape these down to a hard board because this time I'm thinking ahead a little bit and I knew I was going to be using a lot of water. So to save myself the aggravation of this warping, you know, really badly, um, I'm going to tape these down with just some blue painter's tape to my hardboard. And I also pulled out my Waffle Flower water media mat because it has the nice little, you know, wells on the side there. And then for my painting, I am using uh, Nouveau Shimmer Powders. I've shown this in another, at least one other time. Um, I've done tons of videos using these powders, but I've also shown like just painting with them versus what I normally do, which is like sprinkle them on a background, spray it with water, and then just see what happens. So this gives me more control. So like I've mentioned with other, the other videos using these powders, I do not squeeze the bottle. I don't squeeze the bottle. <laughs> the amount of powder that comes out when you squeeze the bottle is insane. Like you end up with this huge mound that you will never use up. Like what little bit I've put in this palette, this is enough to do both these backgrounds easily. So I just gently kind of tap my fingernail on the bottom of the bottle, got the powders into my little palette here. I did one background at a time. And the first one, I just sprayed it heavily with water. So the whole background is completely wet. And then I am just using one of my Zen, like Royal and Langnickel Zen watercolor brushes. This is the number six. And I am picking up this first color I'm using for the background of the background of the background <laughs> is Storm Cloud. So there's a really deep color. Um, when you use the Storm Cloud as um, like sprinkle it and spray it, there are some other colors in it. But when you use these powders and paint with them, you're really mixing all those different colors that are in the powders together, which I'm more than okay with. But again, it just, it gives a different look. So I did the entire background first, and then I'm going in with the different colors to paint the bulbs. And just getting my brush wet, I, as I did more of this, I actually started like adding water to the empty wells and it would give me something to kind of mix in with the uh, shimmer powders. And then I would just go in and paint each bulb. So I'll have all the colors I use like linked and listed in the supplies. But for the blue, I was using uh, Blue Blitz. And then for the pink is Cherry Bomb, which is, so, they're all pretty intense. When you paint them this way, you just, you get the most intense color. So I just went along and would do basically one color at a time just to make it easier. So I'm not having to clean my brush between every single bulb. So just kind of jumping around and, you know, spacing them out and whatnot. I don't worry too much about um, edges bleeding at all. Like, you know, some of the background color kind of bled into some of the bulbs when I was, you know, doing my work. But I don't worry about it too much. 
Um, once I, you know, finish at the splatter and the shimmer and everything, it's, I, I just, I try not to stress out about those sorts of things as much, um, as well as along the edges, um, because I didn't like press the tape down really well. The, the color kind of bled and moved, but because these are a little bit bigger, I'm going to cut them down anyway to fit my card. So again, not too worried about it. So I just kept working my way through the colors. My original like idea in my head with all of this was kind of like a rainbow of Christmas bulbs. That was always my favorite, especially those big ones. You can't really get any of those anymore because like everything's LED, which is great because it doesn't generate the kind of heat those old bulbs did because those old bulbs, it's amazing we all didn't burn our houses down because I used to play with those all the time. I used to like set up my Barbie dolls under the Christmas tree, you know, and play dentist and all kinds of things using the light bulbs, all kinds of <laughs> I used to love that. I would spend hours under the Christmas tree and I just remember those big bulbs. The amount of times I burned myself on those. Like, anyway, but they're pretty. <laughs> they're pretty. Anywho, did both backgrounds. So they're all painted with the shimmer powders. And then I'm going to add even more shimmer. And I'll show the shimmer at the end with like my flashlight and whatnot because in natural light, it like looking at it right now, it looks kind of flat. Like you don't see that shimmer. So with the splatter, I'm adding even more shimmer. I'm using um, my Perfect Pearl powder that's in a mini misty with water and I shook that up really well and I'm heavily splattering this over the background. This is gonna add that texture of the splatter but it also adds its own shimmer too. It's just different from the shimmer powders. So splatter that very, very heavily over both of these cause I just, I love like just that texture and the shimmer it gives. And then I made sure it was very dry, so I just sped that up with my heat tool. And I'm going to add some more splatter with uh, Picket Fence Distress Paint, just white paint. You could use white gouache. Um, there's all kinds of options for that sort of thing. Lately, my thing has just been using the Distress Paint because it's convenient. It's a, it's a very thin consistency and still very white, so I don't really have to water it down too much. The only thing with the Distress Paints is they are permanent. So always make sure you clean your brush out, block whatever you're using when you're using distress paints because it is permanent like it, it it once it's dry it's not going anywhere so did all that splatter made sure everything was completely dry before I remove the tape from both these backgrounds um, it's just forced a habit to be really careful when removing the tape and kind of pull it back against itself even though I am going to cut these down but I just try to be careful so I don't end up like shredding these backgrounds or anything if they were still wet you don't want to remove the tape because the tape will literally like rip the paper so everything's dry remove all that tape and then I cut both these down to slightly smaller than a2 card size and then for my die cut sentiment I'm using the CZ design joyful wafer die and I die cut the outline from two different colors of cardstock I'm using Simon's island blue and Simon's doll pink and then the actual word, I die cut a couple times from white cardstock, stacked them together, adhered them to the outline. And then to kind of finish off the sentiment, I pulled out a sentiment from the CZ Design Ho Ho Postage stamp set. And I'm gonna stamp that onto some white cardstock with um, VersaFine Claire Morning Mist ink. I went with the gray rather than black just because the background on those ended up being more of like a really nice deep gray color. So I thought that just kind of suited everything a little better. So after I stamped the sentiments, I die cut it with one of the Simon Says Stamp sentiment strips or sentiment labels wafer dies. And then I'm going to adhere the die cut sentiments to these backgrounds with that craft tacky glue. And then with both of them, I just put acrylic blocks on top just to kind of hold everything down so that it adheres really well while the glue dries. So I did that with both backgrounds and then the little sentiment strips. I'm just going to kind of cut the left side of them a little bit on an angle and I'm going to kind of end up tucking this underneath the Y in the joyful and then I'm going to adhere that straight to these backgrounds as well with that craft tacky glue. And then once these are dry, I'm just going to flip over these backgrounds and trim off um, the excess with my scissors. So then both of these backgrounds have um, like the same sentiments and everything but just I just chose the two different colors because just mixed it up a, a little bit so after I've got those done I want to do the uh, card bases I want to finish off the insides for both these cards so both card bases are going to be um, heavyweight white cardstock cut to four and a quarter by eleven they're squared at five and a half so we'll be top folding a two cards 
pulled up my Misty again and I'm putting the black foam back into it because this time I'm gonna stamp with clear stamps. So I'm gonna stamp the inside of both these cards with sentiments from the CZ Design Ornamental Set. This came out last year or the year before, something. I'll have a link to it. I've done other videos using this set, but I just, I really like this specific sentiment. So I stamped the holidays word on the inside of both cards using um, Distress Oxide Picked Raspberry and Distress Oxide Salty Ocean inks, just to kind of tie it together with the die cut words on the front. And then once I have the holidays word stamped, I'm going to remove that stamp from the misty lid and I'm gonna line up the other sentiment I'm gonna use, which is also from that same ornamental stamp set. So the inside of both cards will say, wishing you the happiest of holidays. So I'm gonna line up that smaller stamp and then I can ink that up with that morning mist ink, stamp that, remove that card base and then stamp the second one and everything's all lined up and done. So that's gonna finish off the insides of both of the cards. And then to complete these cards, I'm going to adhere both of the card fronts to their corresponding card bases. Made sure that the one stamped with the picked raspberry goes with the die cut with the doll pink. Again, it wouldn't really matter in the end if I had mixed them up because the colors all go together with the bulbs and everything, but me being me, they needed to match. So adhered the uh, watercolor backgrounds with that craft hacky glue. And then as a final bit of more bling, because, you know, I, there's never enough, I pulled out my container of Lucy, little car, little things from Lucy's cards. These are the rainbow, um, rainbow mix jewels that, or rainbow sparkle mix jewels. And there's, of course, all the colors of the rainbow. So I literally pulled out the jewels and put them on, like, the corresponding bulbs. So yellow on yellow, blue on blue, green on green. All throughout like the, the background of this, I put some clear ones on the actual like background areas, etc. And then I'm gonna adhere those into place with the craft tacky glue and that's gonna finish off these cards. So I'll turn my flashlight on here so you guys can kind of get an idea of like the shimmer of the shimmer powders, plus the perfect pearl splatter, you know, the jewels, everything, just really fun, sparkly cards. So um, that's it for today's cards. There will be a link below the video to my blog post. I'll have a supply list with links to everything I use. So you can check it out below if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching, subscribing, thumbs up and commenting. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.